and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Adi just read for you. I share with you today at verse 29. John the Baptist said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, when was the last time you had an aha moment? When was the last time you had something happen in your life that just changed everything? Well, Simon Lovell had an aha moment in his life. Now, Simon was a professional con artist. He cheated people out of money. And his favorite con was to tell people to give him some money for a get-rich scheme that couldn't fail. And after Simon would get the money from that person, he would disappear, and he would never be heard from again. Well, one day, Simon tried this con on a certain man. He got to the point where everything was going smoothly, and Simon was about to get the money from the man, when all of a sudden something happened. The man realized that he was being taken advantage of, and he started to cry. He started to cry. Now, that hadn't happened to Simon before. And Simon what it felt sorry for the man. Simon had never had that ever happen before. It was, it was an aha moment in his life, and Simon gave the money back to the man, and he never conned anyone again. Pastor Kyle Eidelman once wrote a book that was entitled, Aha, the God Moment that Changes Everything. And in his book, Pastor Eidelman said that God gives life-changing moments to people in three stages. He calls the first stage of the aha moment the awakening stage. This is when it's like a light bulb going off in your mind. This is when you come up with a new truth for your life. The second stage in this aha moment is called the honesty stage. This is when the person becomes honest with himself or herself that he or she has a problem. And they take responsibility for fixing that problem. The third stage in the aha moment is called the action stage. This is when the individual takes action on the truth that he or she learned. Now, I think that this is what was going on in the John, with John the Baptist here in the Word of God before us this morning. I think John the Baptist was having an aha moment in his life. You see, John and Jesus, they were both now in their public ministry. And John was telling people that Jesus now was going to baptize people with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And John was telling people that Jesus was going to separate the good people from all the bad people. John was a fire and brimstone preacher a powerful preacher. But all of a sudden, here in God's Word today, things changed for John. Because John says here today, look, the Lamb of God who is taking away the sins of the world. All of a sudden, John is talking about the love of Jesus. All of a sudden here, John, instead of calling Jesus a punishing Messiah, John is saying that Jesus is a loving Messiah who's going to take away the sins of all people. 
and save people from death. Wow. I think this was an aha moment in John the Baptist's life. And today what I would like to do is try to give to you maybe an aha moment in your life. Let me explain it this way. First of all, John the Baptist saw how far sin had separated us from our God. People don't like to talk about sin today, do they? They think that sin is scary. Sin is negative. But sin is real, isn't it? Sin does separate us from God, doesn't it? And sin will lead to eternal death if it is not forgiven. Many people today just don't want to think about that. There's a popular cell phone app in the health and fitness category called We Croak. Its only purpose is to pop up a reminder five times a day letting you know that you're going to die. What a crazy app. Do you need an app on a phone to remind you that you're going to die? The cross of Jesus here reminds us that at one time we were dead in our sins. The cross of Jesus here reminds us that until Jesus died on that cross for our sins, we were not going to be able to be in heaven. John the Baptist, he knew this. John the Baptist knew how far sin had separated us from God, and we learn that here today, don't we? We learn today how far sin separates us from God, too. Then secondly, John the Baptist saw how far God would go in bringing us back to him. John saw how Jesus would be like a lamb led to the slaughter. John saw here how Jesus would die on a cruel cross to forgive all of our sins. Now this lamb, this lamb that John is speaking here is, a, is an innocent animal. A lamb can't do anything to keep itself from being sacrificed. And John says Jesus is like that. Jesus is innocent like a lamb. Jesus had no sin. He was perfect. He was God. He could have escaped being a sacrifice. But Jesus here chose to be a sacrifice for our sins. Jesus chose to die on a cruel cross to forgive all of our sins. He was the lamb of of God. In March of 2011, an earthquake in Fukushima, Japan, hit a nuclear power plant, releasing radioactive chemicals throughout the environment. Workers were called on to come and to clean up the mess, but they would die in doing that. As they were cleaning up the mess, those radioactive chemicals would kill them. A man named Yasuturo Yamato, 72 years old, didn't want young people to have to volunteer for this work and be killed. And so he organized a volunteer group of elderly Japanese engineers who would come to that nuclear site and they would clean up the radioactive materials knowing that they would die. These elderly engineers knew that they were going to die and yet they still volunteered to clean up the mess. I wonder how many of us would have volunteered to do that. Well, I'm here to tell you that Jesus did that. 
Jesus volunteered to give his life for you and for me. Jesus sacrificed his life in a death on a cruel cross to save us from our sins, to save us from death in hell. Jesus did that for us. Now, John the Baptist saw this, and we see it today, don't we? We see today how far God will go to bring us back to him. Then thirdly, John the Baptist knew today that he had to share this great news of Jesus no matter what it might cost him. John the Baptist knew sharing Jesus was going to cost him his life. John the Baptist was thrown in prison for talking about Jesus. He was also thrown in prison because he confronted King Herod about his sin of trying to steal his brother's wife. John the Baptist knew he wasn't going to get out of prison. He knew he was going to die, and it wasn't long after this that John was killed by King Herod. He gave up his life for Jesus. Karen Watson wrote this in a letter to her family. When she went to share the good news of Jesus in the country of Iraq. The note she read said, you are only reading this if I died. Karen became a Christian when she was 29 years old. And she felt a calling for, for, by God to go to the people in Iraq and share the good news of Jesus with them. On March the 15th, 2004, Karen was killed by gunmen in the city of Mosul. Karen also had written this in her letter. I wasn't called to a place. I was called to serve Jesus. To obey was my objective. To suffer was expected. God's glory was my reward. To obey was my objective. To suffer was expected. God's glory was my reward. That was John's mission too, wasn't it? John gave up his life in sharing the good news of Jesus with other people. And that's our mission too, isn't it? We are here to obey Jesus. We follow Jesus. We also know that it's not going to be easy living in this world. We know we're going to suffer. We know people are going to be against us. We know that life is not going to be perfect. But we also know that no matter what happens, we're headed to heaven. We also know that the day is coming when we leave this earth, that we'll be spending an eternity with Jesus in heaven. Today we are learning with John the Baptist how far sin separates us from God. Today we learn with John the Baptist how far God will go to bring us back to him. Today we learn with John the Baptist how important it is for us to share the good news of Jesus with as many people as we can. Let God use you in this new year to make a difference for him. Let God use you to take this great news of Jesus and to share it with people around you so they will get to know Jesus for themselves, so they can have the comfort and the assurance of heaven. God bless us all as we do that.